Welcome back to our series on Root, the game of Woodland Might and Right. In this video, we will be going through the base rules of the game, and in the coming videos we will go through each of the faction's rules. This is the map. The map consists of 12 clearings connected by paths. In between the paths are forests which only the Vagabond can move into. Units may move from clearing to clearing. When moving, a player takes a designated warriors and moves them to a clearing connected by a path. In order to move, a player must rule either the clearing they are moving from or the clearing they are moving to. In order to rule a clearing, a player must have the most combined warriors and buildings. No one is a ruler if they are as a tie. Here's an example. These two eerie units want to move out of this clearing, but they do not rule it. They cannot move to this clearing to the east since those devilish cats rule it. But they do rule this clearing, just south and west, which has a single airy building in it. Each clearing has a number of free slots in it. These slots hold buildings that players may place there. Once they are full, no more buildings can be built. Even if all slots are full, players may still place tokens in the clearing. Any slots with ruins in them cannot hold buildings until the Vagabond explores them. If no one is playing the Vagabond, then find someone to play, lest you wish them blocked for the entire game. Each clearing is also allocated a suit on the fall side of the map. Foxes, rabbits, and mouses represent these suits. These suits represent the community that resides in these clearings. This is the shared deck of cards. Throughout play, players will draw cards into their hands, and different actions will require players to spend cards from their hand. When you spend a card, you call upon animals to lend you their labor. As you can see, each card has a suit that correlates with those shown on the board, except for a fourth suit which is bird. Birds are wild as they live in treetops throughout the whole of the woodland, so they can be treated as any suit. But if a bird card must be spent, it cannot be substituted for another suit. Let's take an example. Let's say an action a player wants to take requires the player to spend a matching card. This is a rabbit clearing, so either a rabbit or a bird card must be spent. Players may also craft. Most cards have a use in crafting, and players may craft the card to gain its effect. In order to craft a card, the player must activate crafting pieces in the clearings shown in the card's bottom left corner. Each crafting piece may only be activated once per turn, and each faction has different crafting pieces. The Industrial Marquis crafts using workshops. The Airy proudly craft atop their roosts. The Disaffected Alliance crafts sympathetically with sympathy tokens. The Vagabond is rather blunt and uses hammers to craft. If a card gives an immediate effect, then the player resolves it and discards the card. Players will commonly take an item as an immediate effect. This item will be from the supply shown on the map. It will then be placed in the faction's crafted items box. In addition, when an item is crafted, the player scores the victory points listed on the card. If the supply has no remaining items a player wishes to take, then they cannot craft that card. Cards can also give persistent effects. These will be tucked under the player's faction board to show only the effect. Multiple persistent effects of the same name may not be crafted. Let's perform a crafting example. The Marquis wants to craft a gently used knapsack, which uses a crafting piece in a mouse territory. These cats, per their faction board, craft using workshops. They have two workshops in fox clearings, and two workshops in one mouse territory. The Marquis chooses to activate one of these mouse workshops to craft the card. The matching item is taken from the supply and placed into the faction board, and one victory point is scored. Finally, the card is discarded. Next we will take a look at battling, which players can do with another for fun, and to send their enemies to the graveyard. When battling, a player chooses a clearing where they have warriors. Said player is the attacker, and they choose another faction as the defender. Battles have two steps. First, two dice are rolled. The attacker deals hits equal to the higher roll, and the defender deals hits equal to the lower roll. But, players cannot roll more hits than the number of warriors they possess in the clearing. Second, pieces are removed. Both players remove pieces at the same time. The player taking the hits chooses which pieces to remove, but must remove all their warriors in a clearing before removing buildings or tokens. We fight to the last man. In this example, the Airy are attacking the Marquis. The Airy roll the two dice, and the Airy takes the higher value, which is three. The Marquis take the lower value, which is zero. The Airy only have two warriors, so they deal two hits. The Marquis deals zero hits. The Marquis takes the warrior first, then the token. Whenever a player removes another player's building or token, they score a victory point. There may also be extra hits, granted by certain effects. 
These are not limited by the number of warriors in a clearing of a battle, so a single warrior could deal multiple hits. Attackers deal an extra hit if the defender has no warriors in the clearing of a battle, leaving themselves defenseless. There are also ambush cards. Before the roll, defenders may play an ambush card whose suit matches the clearing of a battle to deal two hits immediately. Since this occurs immediately, it can reduce the maximum number of hits the attack rolls. However, the attacker can cancel an ambush by also playing a matching ambush card. Ambush hits are not limited by the number of warriors a player has in the clearing where battle is occurring. Players may even play an ambush card when they are defenseless. If an ambush removes all attackers, then the battle ends immediately. Finally, there are dominance cards. The deck has four dominance cards, one in each suit. These cannot be crafted, but can be discarded or spent for their suit. When a dominance card is spent for its suit, it is placed near the map. Any player, during daylight, may pick up a dominance card near the map by spending a card of matching suit. Dominance cards change victory conditions. During a player's daylight phase, if they have at least 10 victory points, they may play a dominance card into their play area to activate it. Their score marker is removed from the track. For the rest of the game, they may only win by meeting the victory condition listed on the activated dominance card. The activated card does not count towards hand size, and it cannot be removed or replaced. And that is it for the base rules of Root. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them below. If not, like, subscribe, and stay tuned for the next video in the Root Board Game series. See the links in the description below to learn how you can support the making of these videos.